Hello, Paul Hobra here from Physio and Therapy and the topic that I want to unearth today is barefoot and minimalist running versus orthotics and supportive shoes. Um, this is a debate that is raging at the moment and I have articles that I've written in very many publications on this topic. Um, I want to talk to you from my physio background, my exercise physiology background and try and help you to understand how my thought processes have de developed and evolved on this topic. Um, I'm going to give you quite an opinionated statement right at the beginning but hopefully I'll quantify this and by the end actually probably contradict myself fully. So please don't judge me based upon what you're about to hear. It has been my belief for a long period of time that people should move to a minimalist style footwear or even barefoot running if they have the following criteria. They've been injury free for 6 to 12 months, that they have almost near perfect mechanics from the foot, ankle, knee and hip and they are already a four foot runner. If you have those things and you're already in what I would claim to be normal footwear so you haven't moved into minimalist, so you've not been injured, you have perfect mechanics and you're getting all the running in your program that you want done, I would ask you the question why do you want to change, what's your motivation? However, there are people who have been long suffering from injuries for a long period of time and they feel that they've seen every possible person in the healthcare industry and they spent thousands of pounds and suddenly they read a book that says that they are predisposed to being injured because they're in a supportive footwear so I can understand why it's compelling for them to go for it and if you're in that kind of nothing to lose category then why not give it a go but if you are going to have a go at minimalist footwear and barefoot running then please understand it does take a long time for you to adjust. There are small risks associated with injuries that come from trying this and going from a cushion shoe. And I'm telling you this not because I want to sell a great big long line of orthotics because that's not what I do. And I also am not going to be very pro it because I haven't written a book called Throw Away Your Trainers. Um, I'm being a little facetious there, I hope you got that. Um, I'm telling you this because it's what I believe. It's my opinion and I'm, I'm entitled to have that opinion. Um, it does take time and I believe that if you're going to go for the minimalist approach you really need to embrace it. If you put something that resembles a hard sock onto your foot you don't get the abrasive wear and tear on the underside of your foot which means that you have no reason to stop unless you feel um, pain. Whereas if you are truly barefoot, there will become a point quite early into your first run where you feel I can't carry on, it's hurting the underside of my foot. And that's put into bed these arguments about syringes and broken glass and all the other things that people talk about, just choose where you run. Um, so, and obviously if you go into a, a sock type shoe or a minimalist type shoe, it doesn't do that for you. It does protect you against the odd stone or a bit of broken glass, I grant you, but um, you will not be self-limiting. So you'd have to be much, much more disciplined about setting out on maybe just a five minute run to begin with and then building up very, very slowly over a, an eight, nine, ten month period. So, what about people that have faulty mechanics where and orthotic can perhaps take someone from uh, uh, an overpronation of the rear foot which is causing pain on the inside of the knee and, and, and maybe then causing pain up in the hip. What then of someone that perhaps needs a little bit of support? And there's good evidence to show that that actually offsets the loading through those joints you go higher up. Um, what then of the minimalist argument? Well, People say that if you're running barefoot, you're running forefoot, so the heel isn't striking, so therefore any leg length difference, any rear foot pronation will be taken out. And I have to say that in many ways I agree with that argument, but what about the rest of the time when that person has fatigued muscles from a run and they're then walking in their footwear to work because they, they cannot possibly be going to work barefoot. So I, I'm assuming therefore that the um, people that are in favour of barefoot don't mind there being some sort of footwear that will take out 
those mechanical issues at all other times when you're not running. So a leg length discrepancy can be rectified, um, a, a, a rear foot pronation can be rectified when you're in your normal fitting shoes because let's face it, 15 plus hours a day you're in normal shoes, a maximum of one to two hours a day you'll be in your running shoes actually running on, on, or, or not in your shoes as the case may be. So I think there's an argument for both but I still stick to my argument that if you sit on one side and you are, you've been injured for a long time, you've tried everything, you genuinely have tried everything, why not? Because you have nothing to lose but go gently, go slowly, build it in. Understand that you're not going to be running PBs anytime soon and it's not a, mi a magical cure. If you are absolutely adamant you're going to do it, you haven't been injured for a very long time, your mechanics you're told are almost perfect or perfect, then why not have a go because you'll probably do very well moving over to it. Everyone in between, I haven't seen enough evidence. Science hasn't told me as yet how to advise you. I haven't seen enough evidence for or against. I've seen a lot of research done by people over here, done by people over here, and of course um, it's, it's quite nice to um, look at your research in a favourable light, shall we say, but I've not seen enough of someone that's totally impartial looking at this down the middle and trying to make a decision. Um, again, I hope this hasn't confused you more, it's more about giving you the, the empowerment to think, but if you want to come along and see us, and have us watch you on a treadmill, look at you barefoot doing things like single leg squats and functional multi-directional tasks and give you an idea of where your mechanics are and what we think would be the right route for you to go. You don't have to follow that, you just have to understand what our opinion is. But you'll be a more enlightened individual hopefully as a result and you can ask us the questions. And I invite people to engage with me on these topics. I want people to give me uh, an, another point of view. I want people to challenge me. That's kind of the point really, is that we're in a, a science which isn't exact. The, the fact that I haven't grown up as an African or as an Ethiopian walking around barefoot um, on, uh, on a great variety of different surfaces, but I have grown up in the UK walking around predominantly on concrete and as young as my parents could do I was in a, a well-fitting shoe probably from a company like Clark's and I'm sure you were the same so reading a book that tells me that I'll be a fast runner because Africans are fast and so I should do the same things they do um, doesn't sit well with me but by the same token saying that every single person that comes into my clinic needs to have an orthotic device put in doesn't sit well with me. I think you're an individual, you have an individual upbringing, and you have an individual set of circumstances that will lead you to the point where you make the decision, am I going to try barefoot and what are the reasons why I'm trying to do this? So I hopefully have given you a few things to think about, if not the answers to your questions. But please engage with me. Thank you very much for listening.